welcome back to my electronics nook for part three of the demo series about the convolution engine. On the books for today is another brief musical demo featuring the electric guitar, but this time with heavily distorted input signals. After that, I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail about the four quadrant multipliers used to construct the system. So if you're not interested in guitar stuff, you can go ahead and skip ahead about a minute or a minute and a half, and it should be into technical explanation. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the raw signal that's coming out of this Ibanez distortion pedal. Now it's heavily modded so that the distortion is highly asymmetrical and much more aggressive than it is stock. The reason for this is that the overdrive pedal isn't really suited for this purpose. You want to have both even and odd harmonics populated all the way up to the limits of human hearing for this application. So I switched out one of the diodes for a red LED and I switched out the other diode for a Scott key and then I cranked up the gain of that stage. So I'm going to show you what that sounds like by itself first. So yeah, I like that tone. It's a uh, it's a little bit more extreme than just a regular tube screamer, and I only really made these mods for the purpose of this demo, but uh, I'm going to stick with it, I think. So I'm going to include the convolution engine in this loop, and you'll have to bear with me because that requires that I pop out a plug, substitute it for a different one, with one hand because I'm holding the guitar, and then i got to also connect this alligator clip with one hand. Let's see if I can do that. Hey, look at that. Now I'm also going to just fumble with the amplifier settings a little bit here. <clears throat> yeah, we should be good to go. So one problem I usually have with these demos is a degenerate acoustic coupling that occurs between just the unplugged electric guitar or my voice and the microphone of the input, when what I want you to be hearing is coming through the effects unit. So in order to mitigate that a little bit for this demo, I've uh, included some acoustic shielding and I'm also going to walk about 15 feet away from the phone for the next part of this demo. So here goes. So my apologies for the uninspired guitar playing there, folks. Probably should have thought about what I was going to play before push and record. Maybe next time. So now I'm going to transition over to talking about the four quadrant multipliers. I'm going to show you a circuit that some of you have probably seen before. This is the multiplier that I published on EDN back in August. It has four op amps and a ring of diodes. So you might expect that if you're going to implement a system with 16 of these four quadrant multipliers, you would need 16 times 4 op amps. Although in convolution, the next step is actually to sum the resulting multiplications together. So you might notice that these two op amps over here can actually be made common to all 16 multipliers. Also, this input works in common and differential modes. You don't really need to work in that basis set. You could work in two different combination basis sets that, that also work out. And you can work through the implications of that for the rest of the circuit, but, uh, and it, which is a headache, admittedly. But you get down to just one op amp for this mode converter. So now if you total up the op amps involved in, in 16 four quadrant multipliers, you just have 18 op amps. And that's a lot less apocalyptic. So I was pretty happy that I was able to pull that off, just 18 op amps for 16 four quadrant multipliers. So of course there's still 16 rings, but uh, it's a lot less. So yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.